Okay, everybody staying warm out there? All right. As you guys see, we have a little friend over here. Everybody say hi. Hello. And he's got it. There's more of us than there are of him. I don't know if anybody's counting. York News Times. Melanie, you do pretty good math. We appreciate your reporting. Can we give a big hand for Melanie tonight, please? I want to know uh, who saw the paper today. Raise your hand if you saw the front page. Oh, lots of you saw it, so you're going to know what I'm talking about. Well, you heard from Brad today that we did have uh, a little situation come in, and I just wanted to let our friend across the street know that I have right here from uh, our county attorney right here in York, William Sutter. Uh, he says, upon further review and consultation with the Nebraska Secretary of State's office, that's the people that run the elections here in Nebraska, just so you know. But it has been determined that the York County Tea Party rally planned for October 28th is lawful due to the fact that it is scheduled to be held after the courthouse building and polling place has closed for business. The rally is scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. The courthouse closes at 5 p.m. So pretty basic math. Again, we don't expect some people to figure that out if they have friends up in Washington. Um, I also wanted to make one more comment. We had a, a the York County Tea Party here was in the paper a lot today. We had a paid ad. Uh, we had a great interview by our chairman, Greg Vandernick. Can we get a big hand for Greg? He's doing a great job. And uh, also had another letter to the editor from our, our good friend, Jeffrey Hines, who he just loves the Tea Party. And I don't know if he's here tonight, and I don't really care. But I did want to make a note, though, uh, that I'd like for him to point to a specific example of where racism or hatred has been used at a Tea Party rally. Specifically, this one would be great. I would love to see examples, specific examples from him sometime. So I know Mr. Howe is in the audience tonight. I spoke with him earlier. Can we give a big hand for Mr. Howe? Thank you for coming. Okay, I'm gonna jump right into it here. Uh, Stan asked, uh, Stan talked today about fiscal responsibility. Brian talked about constitutionally limited government. And I'm going to talk about our third and last principle of the Tea Party, free market capitalism. Now this is perhaps the most important principle of all of these to me, and I want to tell you why tonight. Electricity, the telephone, antibiotics, blue jeans, central air, the automobile, and of course who could forget Al Gore's greatest invention, the internet. Yeah, somebody over here got it, good. These are all things that were invented, manufactured, and sold in the United States. Why? Because of free market capitalism. The inventors, the manufacturers, and the salesmen all profited from these inventions. In fact, so did you, the consumer. These were all inventions that enhance our lives, and they were all made possible by free market capitalism. Now, without capitalism and the opportunity for an individual to make business decisions, freedom is completely lost. Some businesses fail. In the past, if a business failed, it was probably because they could not produce goods or services that people wanted, needed, and desired at a reasonable price. But now with so much government regulation, businesses fail because of government intrusion. Now I've owned several personal businesses, some have failed, and I'm here to tell you I've had some great ideas that have come to a dead halt when I consider regulation. I want you to just think about it for a minute. Let's say you want to start a business, any business at all. What are some of the first things that you consider? Well, there's government compliances, employee payroll, the IRS, and that's just for starters. What about specific paperwork and regulations you're going to have to have to get passed before you can get paid for your first product or service that you sell or provide? How many great inventions that enhance our lives are being haltered by regulation? The one and only reason the United States had had economic freedom in the past is because capitalism and free markets weren't compromised by a big government. The average American spends an enormous amount of time and money on tax paperwork. One study that I read shows the average American works January 1st through April 15th just to pay their taxes. How much time do you think a small business owner spends dealing with complicated regulation? And the short answer is, almost all of it. Do you know that part of the unconstitutional federal health care bill that was recently passed, thanks to our very own Senator Ben Nelson, 
contains a paragraph that requires each of us to fill out a 1099 for every purchase over $600. I know Brad mentioned this too, and we've been bringing this up a lot to people, and a lot of people don't know about it. We're quickly becoming government employees, filling out magnitudes of complicated compliance paperwork just to have a job and to live in this country. So what's the answer? I don't think most of our politicians get it, but I do. Get the hell out of my business! Get out of my life! Get out of my bank account, my day-to-day -day living, and give me back my liberty! And it's no wonder we're in such a huge economic mess. Washington thinks they know best and that they are insisting on micromanaging our lives. This is just another form of slavery. It's economic and financial slavery. I think that Nebraska State Senator Tony Fulton said it best in Lincoln on Tuesday, and I want you to really think about this tonight, when he said, no one living has ever experienced true freedom. I know we talk about freedom a lot in this country. But the more I thought about it, the more I think Senator Fulton is right. None of us living right now have ever really experienced true freedom. So what would true freedom look like? Well, I'll tell you. It would be a world where we go to work and we keep what we earn. A world where you don't have to worry about massive amounts of regulations and complicated laws that even our courts can't decide. And it wasn't government that created the light bulb, the cotton gin, the pot-bellied stove, household appliances, or even the concept of a personal in-home massage. Just for the record, that wasn't Bill Clinton either. <laughs> It was individuals that they knew would be rewarded for innovations through a free market society. In other words, provide goods or services that people want, need, and desire at a reasonable price, and you'll always succeed in a free market capitalist society. It's a huge part of what's made our country so great. And progressives in Washington want to destroy free market capitalism, and they're not afraid to say so. So let the free market do its job, and this economy will go from failing to succeeding. Give me back my pride. Give us back our freedom. Save our economy and bring true capitalism back to the United States of America. Okay, thank you.